So I feel like there's been a recent change in attitude from Disney when it comes to their classic movies, although I can't help but feel like it's not necessarily out of an authentic place, and instead is only because of all the backlash they got from Snow White. Disney is a company that's been producing media for a hundred years now, which is a huge milestone. However, for the last two decades or so, it really felt like Disney was resentful towards their own company. For as beloved as Disney is, there are quite a few critics. There have been multiple essays and books and think pieces about how problematic and harmful Disney's movies are, particularly when it comes to their female characters and the kind of messages they send to young girls watching these films. The Disney princesses, for example, which are the main ones that little girls like, the problem is that the messages that they send are that being nice and being pretty are the most important things in being a girl. Not being smart, not being assertive, not being strong. Even movies from the Disney Renaissance, which many fans consider to be some of the best Disney movies. Beauty and the Beast was even nominated for Best Picture at the time. But still, there are people who say that these movies are harmful. And it feels like Disney has kind of bought into that attitude, because often when they're putting out these live-action remakes of their classic films, they'll talk about how they've fixed and improved them. It's something we've talked about for quite a while, on this channel, and they were doing that with their recent Snow White remake, like removing the Seven Dwarves and instead replacing them with magical creatures, seemingly because they were worried about offending people with dwarfism, after Peter Dinklage, a prominent actor with dwarfism, complained about the fairy tale. However, many fans didn't appreciate this change, including people who also have dwarfism, which is ironic considering the fact that they were trying to avoid backlash, but they ended up going back to the Seven Dwarves except this time they'll be CGI, which are pretty uncanny which still means that little people will not have opportunities to act in those roles. And it also means that the people who were cast as the seven magical creatures lost their jobs. But it's like Rachel Zegler said, that's Hollywood, baby. It's really not about the love story at all, which is really, really wonderful. And whether or not she finds love along the way is anybody's guess until 2024. Um, all of Andrew's scenes could get cut. Who knows? It's Hollywood, baby. But on top of there were questionable changes to the story itself, there were also some interviews with the main cast members that just didn't go over well. Like at D23 last year, there were interviews with Rachel Zegler and Gal Gadot, who were playing Snow White and the Evil Queen. And they made some pretty harsh statements about the original movie that came out in 1937. I just mean that it's no longer 1937. And we absolutely wrote a Snow White that she's is... She's not going to be yeah, saved by the prince. She's not going to be saved by the prince. And she's She's not going to be dreaming about true love. The original cartoon came out in 1937, yeah. and very evidently so. <laughs> um, there is a big focus on her love story um, with a guy who literally stalks her. <laughs> yeah. Weird. Super weird. Super weird. So we didn't do that this time. To be honest, they didn't really say things that we haven't already heard before. Like, for example, in this interview from 2019 talking about the remake of Aladdin, when talking about Princess Jasmine's character, director Dan Lin said, In the first movie, we felt like she didn't have enough of a goal. It was really just to meet a guy. And here she wants to do more than that. She wants to save her world of Agrabah. She wants to play her part in leading her kingdom. Which, like when it comes to Snow White, just doesn't reflect the original movie at all. In in the movie, Jasmine was being pressured to get married, and they were more concerned with her marrying anybody just for the sake of it, something that's actually pretty common in these films, like when Prince Eric was also being pressured into getting married, but he, like Jasmine, was not interested in marrying someone he didn't know or have a connection with. And in her frustration, Jasmine ends up leaving the palace because she finds her role there as being too controlled and suffocating. She doesn't go out into the world to look for a guy. She wants to find herself. She just happens to find a guy along the way who she does make a connection with. And even though they come from two very different worlds, they have a lot in common. But for some reason, it feels like the people who are remaking these movies don't really understand the movies to begin with. Like, somehow they manage to miss all this context and totally misrepresent the characters and storylines. Like, going back to Eric, they changed some of the lyrics in the songs to make it so that he doesn't come off as so creepy, I guess? and non-consensual, like he's forcing himself onto Ariel, which is extremely ironic because the entire point of the sequence for Kiss the Girl is to try to pressure Eric into kissing Ariel. He's the one who's not consenting because A, he's too much of a gentleman, and B, he's in love with the girl who saved him on the beach and doesn't realize that that girl is Ariel. Really, at no point is Eric forceful with her. But what really confuses me about the remake for Little Mermaid is that the original songwriters were involved in that remake. 
egg, and for some reason they didn't seem to stand up for themselves. They clearly never intended for Eric to come off as forceful, A, because he doesn't, and B, that's not the point of the scene, and yet they totally went along with the talking points. Honestly, I think Disney agrees with everything that Zegler and Godot said in that original interview, because they've been saying similar talking points for years now, about how they're using their live-action remakes to fix the originals. However, these interviews went viral, and ended up garnering a lot of backlash on social media like YouTube and TikTok. Personally, I think it's because of how blunt they were being. Zegler in particular is known for being very honest and outspoken, to the point where it kind of gets her in hot water. For example, she was in a DC movie, Shazam! too, but she got backlash for it due to an interview she did. When asked why she took the role, she said she only did it for a job. What made you want to step into this world of DC heroes? I needed a job. I'm being so serious. It is true that many times we take jobs just because we need the money. However, you're not really supposed to say that part out loud. Like, imagine going into an interview and they ask you why you're interested in this position. Obviously, a part of it at least is that you need money. However, the interviewer does not want to hear that. Likewise, a lot of fans don't want to hear that either, and DC fans let their opinions be known. She did go on to say that she loved the first movie and jumped at the opportunity to be a part of this world, but she really should have just said that instead of saying the quiet part out loud. Likewise, when it came to Snow White, she was very open with the fact that she did not care for the original movie, claiming that she only watched it once and it scared her so she never watched it again. She basically says in these interviews that she's more excited to fix the film rather than having much respect for Disney or the original. And again, despite the fact that other Disney remakes have the same attitude as they did with Snow White, the actresses playing these lead characters talk about how much they love the original and how much it meant to them. Take Beauty and the Beast, for example, where the director again says that Belle doesn't even want to be a princess and she wants to be more than that. She really is the first modern Disney princess who doesn't want to be a princess. Someone who's more interested in figuring out who she is than in finding a guy and getting married. Meanwhile, in that same clip, Emma Watson talks about how much she loved Belle growing up. Belle really dominated and characterized a huge part of my childhood and my growing up. I know what she meant to me as a young girl love something that much, you really want to do it justice. I guess no one gave Zegler PR training before she did these interviews. Now the people involved in Snow White might be singing a different tune, but it also might be too little too late. And honestly, I feel like Disney has a lot of nerve, considering the fact that they've been literally saying stuff like this for years now. I do think that Snow White having a remake isn't a bad idea. The original production had a lot of technical limitations, so they couldn't do what they were planning on doing. And it could have been interesting to see what Disney did with a second chance. I just hope that Disney will learn that they have merit and that they shouldn't be ashamed of their past works. I mean, Disney has lasted for a hundred years for a reason. It's more than just name recognition. Back in the 80s, they weren't doing too well, but they were able to turn it around. And they have proven that the studio still has stories to tell. Like Inside Out 2 was great, and Deadpool and Wolverine was a fan favorite. Disney should believe in themselves, not try to pander to a certain ideology, especially one that's so negative towards their own past works. But that's just my opinion. What do you guys think? Do you think Disney's too hard on themselves? Do you think there's any hope for this Snow White movie? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, everyone. I really appreciate it. Before I go, I want to give a shout out to our members. Tyron Carnivore, Shiny Orc Boy, General Bolivar, Depth Charge Media, Samaru163, Gabby Hime, Verdant Range, JVR, Phil C, Taylor Ramirez, Equestron, Norman Sweet Cream, Way Beyond Coincidence, Hunter Rose, 80s Nostalgia Guy, Felix Bam, Lucas Geis, Jay Draws, Meowsers, Sky, Philip, Isaac Martinez, Garcia XV Legend, Tobias Weller, Bandito Bane, Mac B909, Crimson Phantom, Dakari the Professor, Owen Wildish, Jen the Goblin, Caleb Nelson, Todd McAfee, Killer Bomb, Data Dine Executive, and Omni Fear. Thank you all so much for your support. If you would like to become a member, you can hit the join button next to the subscribe button. We also buy me coffee if you want to support us that way. And if you enjoyed this content, you can leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. And that part's free. I'd really appreciate the support. But thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.